Hi folks and welcome to this long term review of the Sony PS5. I was lucky enough to be a day one owner so I've had more than enough time to form an opinion on all aspects of this console. Let's kick off with the most important aspect, games. The PS5 got off to a strong start with big hitting launch titles like Demon Souls, Sackboy and Spider-Man Mars Morales. There was also the awesome Astro's Playroom which comes bundled free for all PS5 owners. Then as 2021 progressed, whilst there were a few solid titles, I felt there was mostly a lack of first party games. Whilst this was slightly disappointing, it's also fairly normal for the early period of a new console generation. However, in early 2022 things are looking far more promising. Gran Turismo 7 has just launched alongside Horizon Forbidden West. We also now have a native PS5 version of Cyberpunk that has definitely been worth the wait. With more major titles like God of War coming later in the year, 2022 is shaping up to be a huge year for gaming on the PS5. So the design of this console has definitely been somewhat divisive. I feel Sony really wanted the PS5 to look as futuristic and next-gen as possible. As a result, it maybe feels slightly over-designed. Whilst I have mixed feelings on the design, it has grown on me somewhat, although this is most definitely a large console. I have mine stored away horizontally in my media unit, but you can also have vertical positioning if that better fits your setup. The DualSense controller is without doubt a big step forward for Sony. With a slightly larger design than the previous DualShock, it just feels better in the hand and is more comfortable for longer gaming sessions. Add to that the superb haptic feedback and adaptive triggers and you have a winning product design that truly feels next gen. Astro's Playroom really shows how good the haptics on this controller can be, with a tangibly distinct feel when you're on different services like sand or ice. It's hard to explain just how good this is, it's really something you need to try out for yourself. It has to be said that many third party titles don't really take full advantage of what this controller can do, so hopefully it gets more widespread dev support going forward. And even if that doesn't happen, then at least full DualSense support is pretty much guaranteed on all first party games from Sony. With a rapid custom SSD, alongside a true step forward in both CPU and GPU, Sony have surely delivered a generational leap in gaming performance. I've been loving gaming on PS5. This is a true 4K machine, with all games looking awesome on my OLED TV. Just as importantly, we're also finally getting better frame rates this generation. The majority of titles now have 60 FPS options, which makes for a far smoother gaming experience. There's also a handful of titles that are hitting a silky smooth 120 FPS. With the improved graphics and frame rates, combined with fast loading times, the whole gaming experience on PS5 just feels more refined. I'll just say this, if you can get one of these consoles alongside a nice TV, then you're going to be in for a good time. So whilst the SSD is nice and fast, it's fair to say that you don't get a huge amount of usable storage with the drive that comes with the PS5. The drive is 825 gig in capacity, but you only get just over 650 to actually use to store your games. If you plan to play a lot of AAA titles, this will get used up pretty quickly. For example, I recently bought Gran Turismo 7, which weighs in at around 100 gigabytes on its own. Fortunately, you can easily upgrade and increase your SSD capacity. I've not done this yet, but I'll definitely need to in the near future. On a surface level, the PS5 UI is excellent. It looks superb in 4K HDR and is super responsive to use and navigate. I also like how the store is now fully integrated into the system. The main menu game tiles feature custom wallpaper when selected for each title, as well as trophy information. These tiles are automatically ordered by most recently played, but it would be nice if we could have our own custom sorting of this primary menu. There's also some odd UI design choices, with some basic operational features taking longer than they should to locate and execute. I've noticed that some other new features such as trophy tracking and activity cards aren't properly supported by many games. Whilst these features seem like a good idea, they aren't much use without widespread developer support. We also have some other basic features missing, for example we still have no themes or folders. 
None of the UI issues that I've mentioned are a big deal, and I'm sure they'll be addressed in the future. Overall, I've been super happy with my PS5. It's such a huge upgrade on PS4. Apart from some minor UI shortcomings, pretty much everything else has been substantially improved. It just feels next gen. As such, it provides a premium console gaming experience that will only get better as this generation matures and progresses. I know these consoles are still difficult to purchase at the moment, but I can only recommend you snag one when you can. I'm going to be dropping lots more next gen gaming content, so subscribe if you want to see more. That's a wrap for this video. I've been Tom Hyphen. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching.